This is the Flight Vective, the brand new flagship trail running shoe from the North Face that is designed to go fast, precisely maneuver through all sorts of terrain, and propel you faster with the aid of a carbon plate, something we've been anticipating in the sport for some time. An interesting knit upper combined with matrix Kevlar panels, welded overlays, a moderate amount of midsole underfoot, and a grippy outsole bring the attention to this shoe. Now, while the shoe has been quite the showcase of the new Vective line and will certainly join many of your shoe quivers with its draw towards speed, the fit is where this could get complicated. Is this shoe's focus on going fast a detriment to the shoe's comfort and overall appeal to a mass market? Now, I love the snappiness and the grip and the approach of the Flight Vective. It's super exciting with that carbon plate, but the shoe isn't without its quirks and especially high price tag. It's time to dig in in today's review of the Flight Vective. Here we go. Ginger Runner. What is up everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the North Face Flight Vective. This is their top tier carbon plated trail running goodness uh, in the Vective line that they just dropped. Just wanna quickly point out that this is not my only review today. I also talk about the North Face's Vective Endurance, which is their higher stack, higher cushion version of the Flight Vective. Uh, that review is available on this channel. There's a link above and a link in the description, so you can check that out if this is the one that interests you. Secondly, before I dive into the likes and dislikes, I have to point out that these shoes were provided for review by the North Face. I am under no obligation to say anything. I can say whatever I want about this shoe. They don't have to see this video before it goes live. Uh, I just get to be honest, that's what I do, and I enjoy it. Additional full disclosure, is that I filmed both Caitlin Gerben and Dylan Bowman's FKTs around the Wonderland Trail on Mount Rainier. They are North Face athletes. The director's cut of that film, Summer of Wonder, is gonna be available on this channel as well. That film, this review, separate things. Let's dive in. Things I like and dislike about the Flight Vective. Starting as always with things that I like, the rockered shape. So this is the Vective line's big marketing push. It's that these shoes are designed in a way where there's a bit of a rocker underneath to kind of continue to propel you forward through your foot strike. We've seen this from other shoe manufacturers in the past. I will say this is a beautiful feeling rocker sensation. It's very similar to the old Pearl Izumi shoes, the Flight Vective being comparable to something like the Pearl Izumi Trail N2, where underneath your midfoot, you feel a bit of additional stack. It's a weird thing to get used to when you first slip on the shoes. You feel like you're sort of balancing on your midfoot, but the second you start trail running in them, the more runs you do in them, the quicker you will adapt to that sensation. And it begins to grow on you. I really enjoy it. It's one of those things that I missed from the Pearl Zoomy line, and I'm glad to see back in production here on a trail shoe where you can really feel it underfoot. I like it. The carbon plate. It is so cool to see the carbon plate come to the trail shoe. We've been waiting for this to happen for a long time. I think just plated shoes in general have been so popular in the road market. We've seen rock plates for years, uh, but seeing a carbon plated shoe designed for snappiness and less protection. It's cool to see and I'm happy it's here. The really good thing about the carbon plate in the Flight Vective is that it's not completely off-putting. It's not so stiff where you can't actually flex the shoe, but it's super snappy where you do get the benefits of a carbon plate underfoot. Uh, I was worried that a carbon plate in a trail runner would just keep so much flexion out of the shoe. If you're looking for some ground feel and a little bit more connection with the earth, you're not gonna lose that because of the carbon plate. So really good implementation in the Flight Vective. I'm happy to see it. And finally, the knit upper. This is unique to the Flight Vective versus the other Vective Trail Runner shoes. Uh, it's this mesh knit upper. It's super stretchy, very elastic. Uh, the entire shoe seems to be made of it other than the patches of Matrix Kevlar materials. I think it's a comfortable choice, especially in a shoe that's certainly designed to be a more precision fit and is in combination with materials that are a lot less accommodating like the Matrix and the Kevlar material. So having that knit mesh, have that stretch, is super important to how this shoe fits and is comfortable for so many different foot types. But it is not all e-ticket rides and illumination parades are a couple of things that I dislike about the Flight Vective. Let's get to those now. Narrow. So the Flight Vective is a precision fit shoe it is designed to fit more European style, more narrow through the midfoot, through the forefoot. Uh, it's not gonna be a great shoe for those who have different sized or different widths feet. Thank goodness for that knit upper, uh, which I talked about earlier, being so stretchy. So as my foot width sort of crowded the toe box, that knit upper begins to stretch. Also of note through that narrow toe box are these additional welded overlays that combine the two fabrics from uh, matrix to the knit upper. 
those can actually cause some interesting hot spots and issues on your foot underneath. They don't break in right away. So without the ability to sort of accommodate a wider foot, you're gonna get some issues with some of the overlay elements. Heel lock. So this is the problem I noticed specifically with the Flight Vectiv over the Vectiv Endurance, and that's that I just really couldn't lock down my heel. Despite the fact that the heel counter is comprised of multiple pads and additional solid elements to sort of provide that lockdown, through the laces, through the tongue, which is all incorporated together, it's really difficult to tie those laces down and get a good polished fit across the midfoot, forefoot that gives you that heel lock. So the whole process is really clean and really modern. I mean, it looks really good, but overall I wasn't able to lock the shoes down really well through the ankle. While that didn't necessarily interfere with a lot of running, uh, for those who maybe are operating on really technical terrain or the front of the pack, a shoe that offers a lot of heel movement is just gonna be problematic. That and the fact when you do actually get a good lockdown through the midfoot, you have a tongue that's all incorporated into the entire upper. So you're gonna get a little bit of overlay, a little bit of squish and roll. Uh, thank goodness it's super soft and cushioned, otherwise you would be dealing with some additional blister issues and hot spots across the forefoot. If you try them on, make sure you can get a good solid fit throughout the forefoot, midfoot, and heel. The three work together and not in a very precise manner. And finally, break in. So this is the same problem I had with the Vective Endurance, more so in the Flight Vective, and that's just breaking the shoe in to a point where it's super comfortable. You begin to get the shoe to work with you rather than against you. I think that has a lot to do with the carbon plate, but also breaking in the midsole, the upper, having it sort of adapt to your foot. Once you get it though, it's great. It just takes time and patience. This is the shoe that I've been running in since the Wonderland FKT filming. This is a brand new Flight Vective. So clearly there's a lot more miles and dirt on this unit. Here's the flexion of a shoe that has been broken in. Here's the flexion of a shoe that has not. Clearly a big difference. In addition to the 20 or 30 miles that it takes to sort of break in the midsole of the shoe, the carbon plate of the shoe, the materials in the upper, specifically the Matrix and Kevlar material, that just never breaks in. Yes, that material is very durable. It's not going to break down, but it is also really abrasive. That could cause hot spots and issues across the instep or outside of the foot. If you don't get a good solid fit in the shoe to begin with, I'm not necessarily a fan of the implementation of the Matrix and Kevlar material here, specifically because it doesn't break in. The Vective Infinite has it. The Endurus, however, does not. But that is it for dislikes about the North Face's flight Vective. In conclusion, the Flight Vective is going to be awesome for those of you who are looking for cutting edge carbon plated trail running goodness. It's snappy, it's fast, it's light without being alienating. So if carbon plated shoes haven't attracted you or worked for you in the road environment, I think this is a really nice step to the trail running scene where it does work. I honestly can't help but think that this is a Pearl Izumi Trail N2 from 2015 that took a long vacation, went and got fit, got super ripped, came back with a whole bunch of new school clothes and came back ready to rip. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a super fun shoe and I'm excited to see what you all think. So let's get a little bit more specific. Build quality. Um, I do think that the shoe is built quite well. It is quite durable. It's something I liked about the uh, Vective Endurus and it is something I like about the Flight Vective. The knit upper is nice, but that combination with the Matrix and the Kevlar, that is a really abrasive material, especially without any sort of cover over the inside of the shoe. So just a heads up that that could cause hot spots and issues across your foot. Comfort, it's not gonna be as comfort as the Endurus. That being said, it is a comfortable, fast shoe. So if you wanna go fast and you wanna go fast with the carbon plate and you still want the shoe to be comfortable and not feel like a harsh, unbendable, unflexible shoe that just provides you with zero ground feel, the good thing is that the Flight Vective actually does that. It gives you what you want. It is a comfortable, fast racer. Fit. So I think this is ultimately where the shoe begins to strike out. I don't think it's going to fit a lot of foot types. I think the material choices, the allocation of the welded overlays, the matrix elements, all those types of things kind of come together to give this shoe uh, a less than stellar fit, especially when compared to something like the Endurus, which is much more approachable, much more traditional. I appreciate what they're doing here to make this that elite level shoe, but it's just not going to work for everyone, specifically in fit. Price at $199, it's an expensive shoe. It is the most expensive in the Vective series for trail runners. I get it, you're paying for that carbon plate, but there are so many road shoes with carbon plates that are going for 200, 250, nearly 300 bucks. So of course they're gonna have a higher price point for a carbon plated trail shoe. So was it actually well-priced at $199? All I can say is that that is too expensive for me. I would prefer to spend $139 on the Endurus and just get more cushion for longer distance and stuff like that. But for many of you who are looking for that little extra edge, that might be exactly what you're willing to spend for it. And finally, looks. Clearly a white trail shoe is gonna get dirty. I said the same thing about the Brooks Catamount. This is no exception. Now after about seven months of running, 
Uh, it's still just the same color brown that it was when I got it dirty initially. Um, this is one that's been used. This is one that's brand new, obviously much brighter. So just expect to get them dirty. And I hope you're okay with a dull brown gray. Bringing us to our final criteria, is the Flight Vective a buy, try, or a why? This is one of those where I'm gonna say try. I think the Endurus is a much more universal option for a lot of people. It will work for a lot of people. Now, a reminder that I have not reviewed the Infinite. From what I know, it is essentially the Flight Vective with uh, a full matrix Kevlar upper and a Pivax plate rather than a TPU or a carbon plate. I cannot speak to that shoe. I have not tested it or reviewed it. I probably will bring one in at some point, but right now with the Flight Vective at the top of the line and the Endurus at the bottom of the line, I'm still leaning Endurus. You save a couple bucks, you have a TPU plate, provides you with plenty of cushion and distance. But if you're looking to race and race fast, the Flight Vective might be one of those shoes that you gotta try. That is where I turn the question over to you. Have you tried any of the Vective series? Is the Flight Vective something that you would consider trying? Uh, let us know in the comments of this video. This is the same shoe that Caitlin set her FKT on the Wonderland Trail in. Uh, Dylan set his in the Endurus. So that's also why I kind of reviewed the two shoes. Clearly, they're both amazing athletes. If you want to find out more information about the Flight Vective or even the Vective Endurus, of course, I have links in the description that will take you over to Running Warehouse. You can get the shoes there. You can find out more information. It is a, an affiliate link, so it helps the channel out. It costs you nothing. Consider it. Uh, if any of your running gear you need to get, you can just use those links. Uh, it helps us out. That's it. If you like this review, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. Do all the things that YouTube tells you you got to do for the algorithm. And of course, social media links at the bottom, patreon.com slash the ginger runner. That is how you can support this channel as well. You can join the GR crew. We are doing daily live streams. We're talking about gear, running, training, uh, all that good stuff. It's a lot of fun. We have some cool challenges coming up for the GR crew. So I encourage you to check that out if you have not already. Yep. That's it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching today's review. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and part of the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.